Hi guys, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to go over how you can quickly and easily make some stylized eyebrows like this with the use of Blender's Grease Pencil Tool. I know they're kind of in between a realistic and cartoony eyebrow and sort of sitting down in the uncanny <laughs> valley of facial hair, but they've kind of grown on me. Ooh. So I thought I'd do a video on how you might put these together. We'll start off by quickly going over the Grease Pencil Tool. Then we'll draw in some base hair to get the general shape. Thinner mid hair to fill it out a bit and then some hairs coming down from the top to supplement the shape even further. Then we'll give our drawing some thickness, and then a little bit of volume, and then make some minor tweaks with the sculpting brush. And that'll be it. Hopefully you'll have something roughly like this at the end. I would suggest whatever style you're going for to have a close-up reference image of an eyebrow nearby to help with getting the shape and flow of the hairs, or even just a mirror or phone so you can take a little peek at your own. All right, well, let's get started. All right, so starting off with our hairless character here, let's set up Blender's grease pencil tool so we can draw in the eyebrow hairs. So three on the numpad for side orthographic view. You should see your 3D cursor down here at the viewport's origin. If you don't, you can click up here and tick the 3D cursor box to make it visible. The 3D cursor is the point at which any object we create will spawn from. Now over to the left, let's click on the 3D cursor button here. This button allows us to move the 3D cursor around the viewport. I'm gonna just click in front of my character's brow bone here like this. Now any object we create will spawn from this point right in front of our character's face. Now one on the numpad for front orthographic view. I'm going to press shift A to bring up the add object menu and then down to grease pencil and then blank. We can't see it, but we have a new grease pencil object called G pencil over on the right, which is a blank plane on which we can draw. Now up to the top left corner, clicking here on the mode drop down menu, we have a new option called the draw, which we can now select. With the little pencil icon selected here on the left, I can now start drawing on our invisible plane. You'll notice as I orbit around, the line we just drew on the invisible plane is aligned with our 3D cursor that we just moved. If you wanted, you can add layers, change blend modes, opacity, and other attributes of the grease pencil over here on the right. Also, just below on the material tab, you can add a new material to change the color of the draw strokes. If you make a mistake, there is an eraser function over on the left. So I'm just going to erase what we drew earlier. Back to the draw tool, you can press shift F to change the strength of the brush. You can also just press the F key to adjust the brush size as well. For the eyebrows, I like to go with the Draw Ink pencil up here, which I find gives a nice tapered shape in its stroke, which nicely emulates real hair. Obviously, you can experiment with these depending on what you're going for. Okay, let's start drawing in some hairs. Over on the right here in the Object Data Properties tab, I'm going to update the layer name to Eyebrow Base. I'm going to start off by drawing in the base hairs that will form the overall shape of the eyebrow. So starting on the left side, I'm going to make some quick upward strokes like this, about six or seven. Then as we get to the middle, I'm going to start turning my strokes more sideways. And then as we get to the outside, I'll start pointing my strokes a little bit more downwards, as well as making them a little bit shorter. So that'll be the general overall shape of my eyebrow. Now over on the right, I'm going to click the little plus sign here to add a new layer to the grease pencil canvas. I'm going to name it Eyebrows Mid. These will be the smaller hairs that fill in the eyebrow a little bit more. So F on my keyboard to make the brush a little bit smaller. I'm going to sort of splice in some smaller hairs with the ones of the base layer. And then finally, again, adding one more layer over on the right, which I'll call eyebrow top. Then I'm going to draw in some hairs coming kind of downwards from the middle of the eyebrow to the outer edge to finish off the drawing portion.
Okay, we have the grease pencil drawing, but now we want to make it into a 3D object. To do this, I'm going to select the eyebrow base layer of the grease pencil over on the right. Then over to the top left corner, let's switch from draw mode to object mode. Then press F3 on the keyboard for the search menu. Then I'm going to type convert and select the convert to Bezier curve option. Now you'll notice we have a new object called eyebrow base, the same as our grease pencil layer. We can hide the grease pencil object for now. We'll come back to it later. So let's select the newly created eyebrow base curve object. And you'll notice when we tab into edit mode, our drawing has turned into curves made up of many small vertices. This is too many for my needs as it creates a high poly count. So I'm going to right click and then select decimate curve from the menu that pops up. You should see a small menu in the bottom left corner pop up that denotes the decimation ratio. If you don't see this, you may want to switch to the layout tab. To lower the number of vertices of your curves, you can enter in a ratio of your choice. Here I'm going to go with 0.1 to reduce the number of vertices by 90%. Okay, now let's add in a curve bevel. A curve bevel gives the curve some volume or shape. Let's tab into object mode, then press Shift A and add in a curve, circle. Let's press S on the keyboard to scale it down a bit. Then over on the right, I'm gonna rename it Eyebrow Bevel. This will give our hair some volume. Now let's select the Eyebrow Base Hairs object and then down in the Object Data tab, scroll down to the Geometry section, then the Bevel section, and in the object field here, click the little eyedropper and then go up and click on the eyebrow bevel object we just created. Now you can see our hairs have some volume now. I'm going to click on the fill caps box to fill in the ends of the hairs. You may notice in the bottom right corner, the poly count has increased quite a bit. And that's because the resolution of our curve is just too high. I'm going to scroll up and reduce the resolution preview field here. You can see as I lower the number, the poly count in the bottom right drops considerably. Now the shape is a little bit too thick. I'm not quite going for that look. So let's select the eyebrow bevel curve and then press S to scale it down. You can see as I scale the bevel curve down, the hairs get thinner. Scale until you get the look you want. To get a better sense of how they look, I'm just gonna quickly add in some color here by going to the material tab on the right and then clicking new and changing the base color to the color of my choice. I'm gonna go with a brown here and then over to the modifier tab, I'm gonna add in a mirror modifier as well. If when you add the mirror modifier, your eyebrow doesn't mirror over to the other side of the face, press Control A and select All Transforms. Okay, so they're starting to look all right as eyebrows from front orthographic view, but you can see as I orbit, they're actually still flat on the grease pencil plane. To get them to conform to the face, let's use the Snap to Face function. Select all the base hairs by pressing A on your keyboard, and then up here, click on the magnet icon to turn on Snap to Face. Then click right beside the magnet for the drop down menu and select face, closest, turn off project onto self and turn on project individual elements. Now just press G and then left click to confirm. Now when you orbit around, you'll see the selected vertices snapped to the closest face, in this case, the brow. So that's okay, it gives a decent look, but eyebrow hairs aren't generally flat against the skin. They have a little bit of volume with all the vertices selected, I'm gonna go up to the Select menu here and then select Deselect First. This will deselect the first vertex of each hair or the root of the hair, if you will. If you wanted, you can further change your selection by pressing Control plus or minus on your keyboard to select more or less. So with the roots of the hair deselected, I'm gonna turn off Snap to Face and then press G to move them off of the face a little bit. The hairs are a little bit jagged now. So to fix this, you can press Control I to invert your selection and then right click and select Smooth from the menu. This will smooth the selected vertices out a bit and make the hairs a little less angular. You can press Shift R to repeat the smooth operation to make it more smooth if you need to. So they're still a little bit jagged looking, so let's go up to the object menu and select Shade Smooth. 
And then over on the modifier panel on the right, let's add in a subdivision surface modifier. And hopefully with that, they should look a lot less jagged. Okay, so that's good for now. Let's quickly repeat those steps for the mid and top hairs. Selecting the grease pencil object again, then to the object data tab. Let's select the eyebrows mid layer. Make sure you are in object mode. Then press F3 for the search menu, type convert, and select convert to Bezier curve. We now have a new curve object called eyebrows mid. We can now hide the grease pencil object again for now. With the eyebrows mid object selected, let's go down to the object data tab. And in the geometry bevel section, we can use the eyedropper to select our previously created eyebrow bevel object. You can tick fill caps if you'd like. And then up to the resolution preview field, I'm going to take this down from 12 to 1 to save our poly count a little bit. Tabbing into edit mode, we can see a high number of vertices again in our curves. Let's right click and select decimate curve. Then down in the bottom left corner, I'm going to enter a ratio like 0.1 to lower the number of vertices to 10% of what they were. Press A on your keyboard to select all the vertices. Then up to the magnet icon to turn on snap to face. Then press G and left click to confirm. Now the mid hair should be stuck on the surface of both the brow and the base hairs. This should hopefully give a nice sort of realistic effect of hairs intertwining and sitting on top of one another. Then up to the select menu, let's choose deselect first. And then with the control plus and minus, we can adjust our selection to get a bigger or smaller root. Once you're happy, press G on the keyboard to move them out a bit and give more volume. Then control I to invert the selection and then right click for the smooth function to smooth out the roots of the hair a little bit more. Then just a little bit of cleanup, adding in the brown material we created before, adding a mirror modifier, selecting shade smooth, and then adding in a subdivision surface modifier. Then rinse and repeat for the top hairs. Select the grease pencil object, then select the layer we called eyebrows top. In object mode, press F3 for the search menu and type convert. Select convert to Bezier curve. We should have a new object called eyebrow top with the newly created eyebrow top object selected. Down to the geometry bevel section of the object data tab, select the eyebrow bevel object, fill caps, then lower the resolution from 12 to one. Tab into edit mode, decimate the curve, snap to face, G to move and left click to confirm. Deselect the first, control and numpad plus or minus to adjust if you need to. G to move the hairs out a bit, control I to invert and then right click and smooth. Shift R to repeat the smooth function if you need to. Then add color, shade smooth, mirror modifier and subdivision surface modifier. If you want to make some minor tweaks, you can select an individual hair pretty easily by tabbing in an edit mode and pressing L on your keyboard for the select linked vertices function. Then you can move, scale, or rotate as you see fit. You can also convert the curves to a mesh by pressing F3 on your keyboard, typing convert, and selecting convert to mesh. Converting to a mesh will automatically apply all of the modifiers as well, which is a neat little trick that can be handy. You can repeat this for the other hair levels, the mid and the top. If you're finding the poly count is still too high, you can add a decimate modifier to the object. And similarly to the decimate curve function, you can lower the face count of the object by reducing the ratio figure. And then now if you wanted, you can control tab into sculpt mode to make more adjustments. You could select the grab or deform brush over on the left and maybe turn off sculpting symmetry to introduce some variance between the eyebrows. Now you can pull things around a bit like this if you wanted. You could also play with the thickness of the hair by making use of the mesh filter here. 
Then up to the filter type here, I'm going to select Inflate. Now by left clicking and pulling to the right in the viewport, you can adjust the thickness of the hairs this way as well. This can help in kind of giving a very cartoony look if you wanted. You can also go up to the filter type menu again and select the smooth, for example, to further smooth the hairs if you felt they were still too jagged. So there you have it. One way to do stylized or even semi-realistic eyebrows with the use of Blender's grease pencil tool. I hope you found this helpful. Let me know if I messed up somewhere or something isn't clear. I reply to every comment to the best of my ability and sometimes, surprisingly, I actually manage to help. Yay! Couple of shout outs. Shout out to Leidu Bao on Facebook who is just starting out in Blender and finished this awesome bear. I literally thought the first picture in his post was mine. Great job, Leidu. Also, shout out to Tim Gates on Facebook, who as part of his quarantine lockdown hobby has been just pumping out the character art as of late and improving like crazy every single day. Great job to you guys. Thanks for contributing to the group. If you want to share your art or ask more in-depth questions with screenshots and stuff, I have a little Facebook group going that you can join. Link is below. You can also just reach out here on YouTube, obviously. Like I said, I do reply to every comment. I also have a Twitter, Instagram, Discord, or even Twitch. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I hope it helped, and see you in the next one.